Welcome back to Logic Basics. We are in the middle of talking about categorical syllogisms. Last time we talked about the mood of a syllogism. Today we're going to talk about the figure. So let's go to the handout. We're right in the middle. The figure of a syllogism is the particular arrangement of the M term or the middle term. Remember, we already know about subject and predicate. Now we're adding a middle term. So it tells us about what the first first through four figures look like. I'm going to draw a picture for this. So it says the first figure is M term is the subject in the major premise and the predicate in the minor premise. So the subject predicate relationship. Second figure is prey prey. Third sub sub. Fourth is prey sub. Let's draw. I'm going to go back to my iPad and I'm going to show you what this looks like for real. So, and I'll do it in two different ways. So we have uh, the middle term could be, let's, let's do it like this. Um, all blank is blank, all blank is blank, therefore all S is P. So in an argument, the conclusion will always have the subject term and the predicate term. So the P term is in the major premise up here. The P is in the major. Here, let's do this. And the S term is in the minor premise. But where? We need to figure out which of those blanks is going to be the S and the P term because the middle term is in the other blank. So in figure one, where it said sub prey, the subject position is here. This is the subject term. Sorry, that wasn't very clear. Let me draw a better arrow. The subject term is here, and the predicate term is here, right? So always the subject and predicate terms are in the same position, but now we have to figure out where they're going to be given we have a third term, the M term. So figure one was sub prey. So here's subject and here's predicate. So we're gonna stick the M term there, okay? That's figure one. Let me clean this up a little bit to show you. Okay, so this is uh, called figure one and we'll call it sub prey. Why? Because the M is in the subject term here and it's in the predicate term here. What about the other blanks? The other blanks are the P term and the S term. Remember this S is the uh, minor term. It's the term that is in the minor premise and the P term is the major term. It's in the major premise. So the figure tells us where to put each of those terms. Okay, so I'm going to draw this in a prettier way. This is kind of messy. So um, figure one looks like this. It goes M, P, S, M, uh, S, P. Okay, so it's a diagonal. And you can put in your quantifiers here now, and you can put in your um, copulas here now. Okay, so that's figure one. What does figure two look like? Um, so figure two, we'll do the same thing. We'll say um, all blank is blank. I'm just putting in my quantifier. It could be any quantifier. All blank is blank. Therefore, all S is P. Figure two is where the uh, middle term is aligned up and down. Okay, so figure two, I draw this line up and down with an arrow pointing that way because um, our M terms are going to be in the place of the P terms here and the rest of the arguments over there. So P and S are over here. Now, if we wanted to draw this without having the quantifier, it would look like this. P, M, S, M, S, P, 
and the argument is over there. This other stuff is here, okay? So that's figure two. What does figure three look like? Hey, let's do this. Let's just erase our, our little, this is, figure three is just the opposite. It goes like this. Um, the argument's going to be over that way. So our middle terms come first in figure three, and then P, and then S, okay? So we could draw this like this. M, P, M, S, S, P. So M is first, the rest of the argument's over here. Figure three. Now, figure four is our last figure. There are four figures. And let's get rid of that. And figure four is going to be the last possible option that we have where the M terms are diagonal this way. And then the P term and the S term go in their place. Okay, so we can draw it like this. P, M, M, S, S, P. Diagonal like that. So when it's all together, we can draw this. This is how you can remember figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four. M, M, diagonal, M, M, up and down, where the rest of the argument is that way, M, M, the rest of the argument is that way, M, M. So what does this look like? Figure one, uh, M, M, P, S, S, P. Figure two, um, P, M, S, M, SP is two, figure three, M, M, the rest of it's that way, P, S, S, P, and then figure four is going to be the opposite of one, where we have M, M, P, S, S, P. So figure four. Now what we have here are the possible combinations of S, P, and M. So notice we're still doing logical possibilities. Um, so figure one, again, is diagonal. M, uh, figure two, the M and M is up and down where the uh, rest of the argument is to the left. And figure three, they're up and down, the rest of the argument is to the right. And then figure four is the other diagonal. So if you remember this picture, or let's do it again. One, two, three, four. This picture represents our figures. All right. Uh, if you are following along in the Kreeft book, Kreeft, Kreeft, uh, this is page 257. It begins talking about mood and figure in 257. Um, now, what are we going to do with this? We are going to combine moods and figures now. So we have these four figures. We're going to combine them with our eight possible well-formed syllogisms. So we're going to, and I'm going to ask you to write this down because I'm only going to write it here once. We have AAA figures one through four, and we have AEE, -E, A -I -I, a O O E A E E I O I A I and O A O. So let's number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These were the moods that we uh, derived in the last episode. I had them up and down, if you recall. So like, this is the major premise. This is the minor premise. And this is the conclusion from last time, where I had it like A, A, A. Now they're, they're written sideways. And we have figures now. So let's, let's call this, let me take that off. Let's call this mood. Here's our mood. 
And now we have figures for each. One through four in each of these, okay? So that will get us 32 possibilities. Let me just move that. That will, uh, when we combine these moods, eight moods times four figures, we'll have 32 possible well-formed syllogisms. Now, um, I want to show you what happened with the IEO that I said is never going to be valid. I'm going to show you uh, in the next segment what happens to IEO figures one through four. And that I'll show you how to test. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to test those for validity. IEO one through four. Okay, that will be how I begin the next uh, session and show you how to test these uh, these arguments for validity. All right, so I'm going to pause here next time. I'll just come back with this with this uh, 